Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nerdy Lover and welcome to a brand new series on our channel here on FM22. On our screen right now is Mateus Angel Ruiz, a successful manager over the Barcelona side. If you're looking for another football manager save to watch, please check that out. In 31 or so episodes we take Barcelona from a, well, the, the current shape that they were in, um before the Xavi appointment, and we uh, we make him a little bit better. So please check that out if top-level European football interests you. But today we're going to be starting a new save game, uh, and as mentioned on my Barcelona save, I am a Ipswich Town fan, which is a club that plays in the League One of England. We're not very good, uh, and we've just sacked our manager, Paul Cook, so as you can see from the title here, we'll be taking them over and we will be trying to get Ipswich Town back into the Premier League and compete in Europe. Unlike my Barcelona save, this will go longer than 31 episodes, uh, unless I'm incredibly successful. Um, so strap in, because this is going to be a long series. So let's get the database set up. So we've done what I typically do for my saves, load every single nation into the game and then just select the ones that I want playable. I want to stick as Ipswich Town Manager for as long as humanly possible. So I've only got England as a nation playable, everything else is view only. So our small database, well our large database is quite small. So we should be able to get through this game pretty fast. Now normally around about January you get databases out on things like FM Scouts or sort it out SI which will allow you to jump in as the current manager that's really what I would like to do but I can't so the latest I can jump in is it's the 13th of September so that's what I'm going to do I jump into here maybe one or two games have already been simulated as the Ipswich Town boss that's fine um, whether we win them all or lose them all because right now Ipswich Town are ninth in League One and we are really projected to be definitely top six, hopefully challenging for automatic playoffs. That's not happened the last couple of years, and I'm going to try and change things. And we're going to try, if we can't get up in the first season, definitely the second, and then have a good couple of years in the championship before pushing to the Premier League. So without further ado, let's load up the database. England's the only country that we're going to be playing. However, we have loads of leagues in loads of nations. A new save means a new profile. So let's think of our guy. Okay, let's go Thomas Kennedy. There's a town nearby to Ipswich called Barry St. Edmunds. And it's sort of in the East Anglia region, so uh, no second nationality, just English spoken. That's all we're going to do. Birth dates. Uh, let's go 5th of December. Um, how old would a League One manager be? Let's put him about 40? 40, 42 young? 81 would be 40, wouldn't it? 5th of December. And we might as well make his favourite team Ipswich Town. As that's, ah, these are some of my other saves. Uh, Du, 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 England, League One, Ipswich Town. We don't want to be taught anything because we know everything. Onto the body. Okay, our chap will be 6'4. Let's go average build. Gorgeous. Let's give him a little bit of hair. Here we go, that's our manager, he looks beautiful. I think in League One, we'll make him a tracksuit manager. Can't really see the difference between a lot of these. Uh, warm up trousers, warm up trousers and jumper. Let's go warm up, let's go full on tracksuit. And Ipswich Town play in blue and white. Maybe we just want a blue tracksuit. With the white highlights. Yeah, I think that looks nice. And then we'll go for 
black, blue, white. Yeah, that's all good. So here is our gorgeous manager, Mr. Kennedy. And then 10 attacking. I think I like that. Yeah, these are the stats we're going to go for. 10 attacking, 18 defending, fitness, goalkeeping, and technical ability will all be outsourced to uh, fitness coaches, goalkeeping coaches, and assistant manager. Our tactical and mental knowledge will be really good, and we, following the tradition of Ipswich Town, we're going to bring quite a lot of young players through. So let's give that a little confirm. Start playing. There we go, Thomas Kennedy. Signed as the new club manager. 39 years old. I was going for 40... Oh, okay, yeah, because we're in... We're in um, September, so when December rolls around, that'll be 40. Okay, yep, that's fine. Two-year deal worth £5,500 a week. Managing his favourite club, so that'll give us a little bit longer if we don't get off to a hot start. And, of course, the Divide Tour is an Ipswich Town sponsor. Local hero Ed Sheeran connected to the club, which is always good to see. So, we're a two and a half star reputation. Media predict us to finish second. We currently don't have an assistant manager, and our local rivals are Norwich City. Portland Road, a 30,000 seat stadium. It's a lovely place to go. As the current lineup, this is under the Paul Cook system, a narrow 4 2 3 1. We're going to be playing a kind of a 4 2 3 1, but also. I would like to see us play a 4-4-2 system and I will be creating that tactic at some point at the start of the save. Play entertaining football. Develop young players. See, I was telling you. We like to bring young players through. Work within the wage budget, which is important and I love doing that anyway. Uh, win promotion this year uh, and remain in the championship next year. Become an established championship site. Yeah, so this all lines up with the sort of vision I had for myself as Ipswich Town manager. A couple of players in the last year of their contract. We'll have to deal with this when we come to it, but I think the best place to always start with any save is your tactics. There's not really a sense of style of play that I want to introduce, so I'm going to go straight for the create your own style. And I did say we want to play a 4-4-2 system, so let's get that going. And I'll be right back with our, our team and a couple of variation tactics we can use throughout the season. And we're back. So this is, well, these are the three tactics that I'm hoping to rotate in and out of throughout the season. We have a 4-4-2, um, basic football for League One. Also, uh, another reason for choosing this tactic is um, Ipswich Town have quite a glut of uh, talented strikers, especially at the League One level. Macaulay Bond's been setting the league on fire. Joe Piggott's not really got a game, and he is statistically our best goal, uh, our best goal threat moving forwards with finishing of 16. So we really want to get him involved more. Other names that people may be familiar with: um, Connor Chaplin, uh, James Norwood, formerly of Rangers. Caden Jackson played well last season. We've got Louis Barry on loan from Aston Villa this year. So we really want to try and get more than one striker involved. This is a second system. It's more kind of what Paul Cook was playing for Ipswich Town, the, the previous manager. Uh, you know, a four-two-three-one wide. Um, and again, with similar mentality, a positive mentality, direct passing, running at defence, just trying to be the better team here in League One. And then in the games where we really need to defend, I'm going to be working on this five defender formation in the background, but we're going to see less and less of that, uh, especially in the early stages of the series at League One. So they're the sort of systems we're going to go for. Obviously, we jumped ahead a little bit. Ipswich Town are sixth place, which isn't too far off where they are in real life at ninth. Um, but they are in a little bit of downturn form. We're also playing in the Papa John's Trophy. So I think we could have a really interesting time here at Ipswich Town. The first transfer window has been disabled, so it's going to be all about January, as it is kind of in real life. I'm starting this, this recording session on the 7th of December uh, in real life. So... We're getting close to the January transfer window, and I don't want to sort of ruin stuff with, with... And I don't want to kind of ruin the realism of the series by making new signings in June, July, August. One player I just wanted to quickly mention here is Scott Fraser. Under Paul Cook, he was playing out on the right and the left quite a bit. As you can see from Football Manager, he's not very good there, and he hasn't been very good there in real life. 
I'm carrying a little bit of prejudice towards Scott Fraser coming into this series. I'm going to try and give him a go in the centre of the park. Uh, he's played his last couple of games there and he's looked a lot better. So he'll be next to Sam Morsey, who is arguably our best player, um, most creative player that we signed from Middlesbrough at the start of the year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick pause. I'm going to start working on guys' individual training, uh, maybe loan some people out and list things, and then we'll sort of come back and recap for our first game, which is in five days' time, in five days time against Lincoln City away from home. Just taking a look at the wee finance screen, Ipswich Town have a balance of £2.3 million and a wage budget of £182,000 per week. We're currently spending 177000 of that, so we've got 5000 to spend unless we can clear some space. Uh, in terms of debts and loans, there is a £283,000 transfer debt. We're going to be paying that off until the end of this year, 33000 per month. The thing with Ipswich Town is we do have a very large amount of players to draw on, a large under-18s team, filled out under-23s. Not all these players will make it, but I want to try and keep as many of them as possible um, and try to uh, develop them uh, and bring them through the academy, uh, just like Ipswich Town do in real life, really. Um, but we're going to be playing against Lincoln City. Lovely to see that my coaches think we should change most of the first team. Kane Vincent Young is currently injured, so we're going to be substituting him off for Yanoi Donacian. But trying out our new 4 4 2 formation, we're going to be having Vladaki in goal, Penny and Donacian as fullbacks, Edmondson on no nonsense defender on defend, Luke Wolferden on ball playing defender. We have Edwards on the left, Burns on the right, Morsey and Fraser in the middle as advanced and deep-lying playmakers. The top two are Bon and Piggott, and I think something that's really going to help us out is the early crosses and floated crosses instructions. So, 7th place Lincoln, 6th place Ipswich Town. The goal for me personally is to finish top six. So this is an excellent test for the boys in blue on our managerial debut. I was just about to pause it to adjust my HUD before we have a free kick being taken by Penny. It appears that every single one of our players is currently offside. So uh, let's see how this goes. The cross comes in, Fraser scores. And it's chalked for offside. I actually thought it was going to stand for a second until I saw the linesman. That's impressive. Every single one of our men are offside. Jeez, that's... that's. Mm, okay. Donassian throws it into the feet of Piggott. Wes Burns cuts inside and Donassian is there. Piggott's on the ball, edge of the box for Burns but cleared away by Lincoln, recovered by Edmondson, centre half of the town. Keeping some good possession here. Penny with a floated cross for Joe Piggott to attack, but he doesn't quite do it. Ball recovered from the clearance, and we're piling on the pressure here against Lincoln. Yanoi Donassian, the fullback, progressing up the field. Fraser, back to Donassian. West Burns with a shot, but closed down. Macaulay Bon, edge of the box. Now Sam Morsey sprays it out wide to Donassian. Does he have the cross? He does, and it's Edwards. Kyle Edwards. Formerly of West Brom, scores the first goal of the series for Ipswich Town. The pressure told in the end. Ipswich Town won Lincoln nil. And isn't it great that as fans we can escape reality in order to see our team win on a video game? Ipswich Town are in the lead. First highlight for Lincoln. It's a corner and it's almost a goal. A centre half jumped up higher than most of us. We're up to fourth place in the table with the current scores. Bull goes to Brid Cuts for Lincoln. Goes down the line. Cut inside for Dan and Dulu, who scores his goal. Dan and Dulu either he's either previously of Southampton or on loan from Southampton. 
That was too easy. I know it's going to take a little bit of time for our chaps to get used to the system we're playing, but we're playing a flat back four, so it shouldn't be too different. Fullback was nowhere to be seen. Ebenson dragged out of position, and Dulu just has to walk it in. He's down as a target forward here. He is on loan from Southampton in League One, worth that much. He's going to do well this season. Lincoln come again. Hopper, Dan and Dulu, now Maguire out on the left hand side. Donassian forces him backwards. Bridge cuts. Tries the right hand side now. Can we put pressure on Lincoln? The cross comes in and it's 2 1 to Lincoln. Tom Hopper with the header at the back post. And we've been found out. That was poor. See, Hopper's being marked by Wolferden right there. Adelakan whips it in, and it's just a mistimed jump from the centre half. Goalkeeper stranded. Lincoln 2, Ipswich 1. Highlight kick off here. Can we peg them back quickly? Fraser to Morsey. Wolferden. Fraser. Burns. We're moving the ball nicely. Bon. Out wide right to Wes Burns, who may be our best player. Cross in for Sam Morsey. It's 2 all. The Egyptian midfielder scores a header. He's not that big, actually. He's 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, it's a nice ball from Bon. Burns is lethal out on that right flank. Good cross picked out. Goalkeeper maybe could have done better. But we'll take it. It's 2 all. Bit of a goal explosion here in the first half of our first game as town boss. Penny, Morsey. We have our left back committed upfield. Fraser back to Morsey. The chief creator to Edwards and what a hit. Linesman's keep kept his flag down. There's no VAR in this division. So it is 3-2 to Lincoln. Morsey to Fraser. Back to Morsey. He's got time to pick out this lovely ball. No one tracked the run of Edwards and it's the sweet volley on the right foot on the half turn there. Exactly how we wanted to end this first half. Yeah, he's onside. He's not bad at finishing. In a word, wow. <laughs> Five goals in the first half. It could have been six if Fraser's goal was not chalked off. We've not looked too bad. They've scored really their only two chances, so that is a little bit worrying for our defence, but everything else is going to plan. I'm enjoying this so far. Ladaki for Ipswich goes long. Exactly what we want over to Piggott. He's one on one with the keeper, and he's gone the wrong side. How many times are we going to be free like that this season? You suspect not many. Penny with the cross didn't beat the first man. That's disappointing, and Lincoln can come away on the counter attack now. Good tackle by Yano Donassian. He'll pick up the booking, but he'll stop the counter attack. Raise a foul. And it's going to be a Lincoln free kick. Surely it's too far out for a shot from Maguire. He goes for it anyway, and it's just over the bar. Ladaki had it covered. We've not seen too much of Macaulay Bond, so we're going to bring him off for Connor Chaplin. He's not going to make much of a target forward, so let's amend that now. Uh, let's have Piggott. Let's put Piggott as the... Uh, Target forward support, Chaplin as a poacher. Both fullbacks on bookings here. Do we want to sub them? The only fullback we've got on the bench is Kane Vincent Young. I think we leave it. West Burns is looking a little worse for wear, stamina wise, so we're going to bring him off for Sonny Aluko, formerly of Hull City. And he's been. You know, he's he's past the hill age wise and physically he he's not the best, but uh in the you know, the twenty minutes we're gonna give him he should be able to make a good impact on the game. Up to third place as things stand. Four minutes of stoppage time to see out. Lincoln will have a highlight. Robson goes to Maguire, but tackled by Donassian, recovered, and now Morsey gives it to Piggott. His pass was intercepted by Sanders. Hopper Plays it out, and now Sanders receives the ball. Maguire on the left for Lincoln. With two minutes left to play, just over the bar with the header. 
And we may have just got away with that. Well, all the goals came in the first half. I can see I'm going to have my work cut out for me to try and coach this team defensively. Lincoln really only created two chances and scored both of them. We had a chance to go 4-2 up and kill the game, but Pickett couldn't quite convert. But all in all, our first game joining mid-season as an inexperienced manager, I'm pretty happy with that. Three goals and three points. Bring on the next match. Our first win takes us up to fourth place in the table, one point off the top and two into the playoff spots. Obviously, Wigan and Fleetwood are big teams in this division. We've also got to watch out for Sunderland, although they seem to be quite inconsistent. Another big team which was relegated last season, Sheffield Wednesday, managed by Darren Moore. And they have a solid side. They're going to be a, a challenge. They actually have Sadio Badahino, who's uh, flame burned bright for a season or two at West Brom. Never really hit the heights after that move to Spurs didn't transpire. So of course he's going to score against us. Second game in today's episode will be against Sheffield Wednesday next. Okay, so a recording error has scrapped has scrubbed the Wednesday game, so uh, game two will be Doncaster. We won 3 1 against Wednesday. I'll just see if I can pull up the highlights for you now. So, first of all, we took the lead after Kane Vincent Young crossed the ball in. Shea Dunkley missed the ball, and small smallest person in the box, Connor Chaplin, won the header. Goal number two, Chaplin was slaloming his run on the left-hand side, cross into the corridor of uncertainty for Burns tapping, so Ipswich should 2 up before the half-time break. Shortly after the half, Sheffield Wednesday did peg one back, Musa Sal's cross came in and Berahino guided his header whilst falling away into the far corner. But we sealed the deal for 3-1, a long ball over the top to Connor Chaplin. He returned the ball back inside, James Norwood substituted on for Joe Piggott, made it three. So with a two day break we will be playing 13th place Doncaster before we round up the episode at the end of September. I'm tempted to name an unchanged side from the win against Sheffield Wednesday. I will just substitute Joe Piggott for James Norwood's. Despite Piggott having the better stats, Norwood's actually averaging a 7-4. Less game time, he's okay. Um, he's had a couple of good seasons for Ipswich Town over the last year or two, um, and he's really good at this sort of League One level. Um, so we're going to give the nods to James Norwood, and should he fail to score, we will then bring on Piggott or someone else at the top of the formation. Now in this fixture in real life, when Ipswich played Doncaster at home, we beat them six goals to nil, so if that's a benchmark of what we can expect today, um, that would be pretty promising. Penny, free kick from range. Good save by Darkberg. It's going to be a corner. Penny again on the set pieces. A left-footed outswinging cross, but cleared away by Anderson. We're keeping the pressure with another set piece. Third time's the charm, perhaps, as Penny crosses in. And it's headed over by Norwood. Nice to see Sunderland losing. They're also one of the uh, bigger teams in League One. And because of Wigan's defeat to Sheffield Wednesday, we're actually top of the league 10 games into the year. Hardly action-packed so far, but Tom Anderson's been booked for Doncaster, so we're going to have another set piece here. Penny shots. Oh, just over the goal. Goalkeeper was rooted to the spot, and there was a great chance to score there. Quite an uneventful first half. We've had all the highlights and most of the chances. Doncaster yet to even have a shot. I think we keep going how we are right now. Maybe go attacking mentality and maybe slightly more direct in our passing approach. But I'm liking what we're seeing so far from the statistics. Williams for Doncaster has the free kick. And they're going up, but it's cut out by Vincent Young. <clears throat> Long ball up to Connor Chaplin, intercepted by Williams, and Bostock 
and play in Doncaster. Do I do good save? Oh, and Galbraith there. Oh my goodness, Young. Jeez, I thought that was a penalty. Um, okay, wow. Warning shot. Vincent Young with a throw in to Fraser. Resets with Wolferden. Wide right to Vincent Young in loads of space to pick out a cross, but Chaplin just can't compete in the air. Sam Morsey picks up the ball. 71 played. We have another highlight. Norwood's come outside of the box to receive the throw in. Vincent Young with a cross. Piggott's! Oh, yes! Oh, no, what? The substitution popped up and I thought it was the goal. <laughs> oh, dear. It's still nil-nil. No highlights yet and time running out on us. We're now into stoppage time. And despite our changes, we were unable to get the breakthrough. 19 shots and an expected goal to 1.5, but we couldn't quite put the ball in the net. Below standard games for Chaplin, Fraser and Norwood, so they were substituted off. Ipswich Town nil, Doncaster nil. So that means we are going to sit in second place at the episode's end. One point behind league leaders Wigan. Cambridge are doing quite well, that's surprising. Wickham are one of the stronger teams in the division as well. Portsmouth are 13th. Sunderland, Sunderland 16th, that's not very good. MK Dons are decent in real life as well, and they're bottom of the league. Okay, let's figure out where we're going to come back. Okie dokie. I mean, in general, it's been a very good start for us as the uh, new manager of Ipswich Town. Seven points from a possible nine. Wins against Lincoln, Sheffield Wednesday, and then a draw for Doncaster. In terms of when we want to come back next, Cambridge United in third. Portsmouth are supposed to be good on paper. Fleetwood aren't too bad. I think we'll come back for the Cambridge match and the Portsmouth match. And if Fleetwood are in the top six, we might turn that into a triple header. Of course, we've got the first round of the FA Cup coming up as well. So uh, we'll come back for Cambridge and Portsmouth and maybe Fleetwood. Uh, thank you so much for watching this new series here on YouTube and on my channel. My name's been Nerdy Lover and have a lovely day.